My name is Baker Bigsby. Uh, I'm an audio engineer and I worked for 30 years starting about 1970 to 2000. And uh, I understand that you're learning about the Harlem Renaissance in history class. So a star, my daughter, asked me if I knew anything about the Harlem Renaissance. So anyway, Hank Jones was one of the old guys I recorded in the 70s. And he was part of the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance started about shortly after 1900. In the flapper days, they called it. it was, and it was a social revolution. It was only 50 years after the Civil War. And after the Civil War, there was a movement of, uh, of a lot of uh, uh, black musicians into cities, especially New York City, where the Harlem Renaissance occurred. The Harlem Renaissance, uh, with so many extraordinarily talented musicians, uh, so talented and the competition was so intense that they just had to get better and better and better and it produced some of the best musicians the world has ever seen. Hank Jones was a piano player, and he was one of those musicians. Uh, he came from Detroit, from a musical family. He had two brothers, Thad and Elvin, both who became famous in their own right later on, but he was the oldest brother. And he, as soon as he was old enough to get on a train, he took off for Harlem because he wanted to be a musician. Hank Jones played with not only Charlie Parker, but uh, Benny Goodman. He toured five years throughout the world with uh, Ella Fitzgerald, who's a jazz singer that maybe some of you have heard of, I don't know. <laughs> Those of you interested in jazz have probably heard of Ella Fitzgerald. He was just extraordinary. He was, a, he was one of the oldest musicians I've ever worked with. He was in his late 70s when I worked with him then, and uh, he could still really play great. <coughs> we made that record. <clears throat> and then years later, some years later, I, I worked with uh, Hank Jones again in Berkeley at uh, Fantasy Records uh, on the label called Galaxy. I think I made four records with him then with different groups. That's what he looks like. Wonderful gentleman. And a, a true gentleman. Kindly, intelligent. And one of the things that was dumbfounding to me about Hank Jones is this is a man who played in clubs every night of his life for 65 years by the time I got to record him. And he, I picked him up at the airport in Oakland and he was carrying a practice keyboard, which is simply a piano keyboard without strings, without a piano attached to it. It's just the keys. And I said, for heaven's sakes, man, you know, why do you get all that thing around? You've been playing your entire life. And he said, so I can practice, so I can get better. And that's what he did with his time when he wasn't in the studio playing, when he wasn't in the club playing, he was in his hotel room practicing. And he was in his 80s. He was still trying to be a better musician. Let that be a lesson to people that want to be an artist, whether it's a musician or a painter or whatever it is you want to do. I've found with working with artists that how famous or how rich or how successful you are doesn't have anything to do with being an artist. If you, An artist is an artist because they have to. An artist paints or plays because they must. It doesn't have anything to do with the audience. It doesn't have anything to do with acceptance from anybody else in the world. They do it because they have to. And uh, 
if you find you want to pursue an art career in art, uh, just do it. I guess that's about it. I'll play you a little bit of Hank Jones. And this song is called, uh, is strangely enough, a very hip rock and roll tune, although I know it's not uh, a rock and roll that any, any of you can identify with, but this is, this is where the guy's coming from. Starts off with just Hank Jones. Then bass and drums come in. Turn in a guitar tell I guess that's the end of our interview. Just one last thing, gang. <laughs> Live what you love. That's it.